What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Jay coming at you with another Splatter Talk Cinema Retrospective review. I promised in my last video that I would be reviewing Jason X, and I meant it. I know this is a guilty pleasure for a lot of horror fans, but to me, fuck this movie. End of review. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Let's get into it. We opened the movie at Crystal Lake Research Center 2010. Who the fuck authorized the research center at Crystal Lake? Where did they get the money for this research center? Oh, Jason. Apparently some asshats authorized keeping Jason locked up in a fucking warehouse in Crystal Lake by a few chains. So big wigs come in to shut the project down and transport him across the United States for more research on his regenerating powers. Wait, what? Shit. That would have been a better movie. Imagine them trying to transport him through the United States, leaving Jason to break out and make his way back to Crystal Lake, killing anyone who stepped in his way. No, we had to get this pile of dog shit of a movie. Anyway, the plan goes south when Jason pulls a Houdini disappearing act and gets all Mortal Kombat on everyone in the room, except for Rowan, this movie survivor girl. She grabs a shotgun and runs. She gets Jason to follow her into a cryogenic chamber where she blasts his ass in. She starts the freezing process, then BAM! Jason stabs her through the steel of the cryo chamber, breaching it and freezing the entire room, including Rowan and Jason himself. Fast forward to the year... 2455. 445 years later. The world looks like Bruce Wayne's dream and Batman v Superman. All we're missing is the parademons and the Omega symbol. Earth has apparently been abandoned for years. We get to meet the group of people who this movie's cannon fodder will be. Apparently, this is a class field trip. The group stumble across Jason and Rowan. I guess in uh, 2024, hockey is banned? Damn, guys, in four years, there'll be no more Stanley Cup. Looking like a discount Captain Kirk, Professor Lowell tells the group to bring the two bodies aboard the Grendel. That's the name of the trash can carting his dumpster fire into space. On board, they revive Rowan using nanotechnology. Where in the hell did this nanotechnology come from? Why is everyone using it in Hollywood? That must be where Tony Stark got it from. It's nanotech, you like it? Jason is left to be dissected. Knockoff William Shatner calls the Money Man and tells him about his find. The Money Man recognizes the name Voorhees and tells Dangerous Dan that Jason could be worth a fortune to the right buyer. Back at the morgue, Adrian is pulling off Jason's mask. Holy fuck! That shit looks like them old ass garbage pail kids. Look at his fucking teeth! Put that mask back on his fucking face before I throw up. As Stoney and Kinsa start to get it on, Jason starts twitching. Something about having an orgasm. We can't have that shit. Kinsa finally reaches ecstasy and Jason springs to life. Adrian turns around to find Jason gone. With a huge jump scare, Jason takes Adrian by the back of the fucking head and proceeds to perform one of the series' most iconic kills. He puts her head in liquid fucking nitrogen. Not satisfied with that, he caps the kill off. How did he know liquid nitrogen would do some shit like that? Anyhow, Jason then finds a familiar killing weapon and goes to open a can of whoop-ass on the Grendel. We cut to the Wish.com version of Captain Kirk bringing Rowan some food. I wonder what they eat in the future. He informed her they are on their way to the cleverly named Earth 2. I love the originality of this movie. Rowan tells Professor Lowell about Jason Voorhees and their attempt to kill him. He then takes Rowan to meet some of the other people of the ship. Sunaron, Janessa, Sergeant Brodsky and KM-14, an android made by Sunaron. Waylander brings in Jason's machete and Rowan finds out they brought Jason on the ship too. She is against it. Professor Lowell wants that money though. After seeing Jason is missing, the Grendel goes on lockdown. 
cut to the alien-style military unit getting ready to track down Jason and kill him. Brodsky and Kirk's twin separated at birth find Kinsa in her underwear, covered in blood. Brodsky sends the word to kill Jason on sight. Meanwhile, we head over to the writer of this dumpster fire and the idiot who got his arm chopped off on Earth playing some virtual reality game. They turn around to see Jason slicing through the monster in the game. Wait a minute. How in the fuck does Jason see the monster when in reality they both have game pieces on their heads? Anyway, Jason breaks the idiot's back like Bane did Batman and did to the writer what I wanted to do to him for fucking watching this movie. We go to Professor Lowell trying to ask Brodsky to bring Jason back alive and bribes him to do so. This leads to one of the best quotes in the movie. Well, I promised the doc we'd take him alive. So, after you blow him all to hell, put him on his legs so we can say we tried. <laughs> yeah. Cut to Crutch, chilling at his workstation. Someone is creeping in the background. Oh, hell no, I'm fucking out of there. He looks in the mirror to see Jason. Just as Jason is about to kill him, we get Brodsky, ex machina. Nice save, guys. What happens if you shoot a hole in the ship's cabin or something? It's fucking over, man. Each team is dispatched to kill Jason, but one by one, Jason takes them out like Hitman in the video game. This scene is when the body count starts to actually shoot upward. Now, it's all up to Brodsky. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the crew is now on their own. The plan was to get to Solaris, to dock and deal with Jason. How'd that work out for you? As the pilot goes to dock, Jason kills him, causing the ship to crash into Solaris. Look at that CGI. So much for Solaris. And just when you thought all was well, Jason jumps through the window, sending our crew on a wild goose chase. Except for the greedy professor. He tries to bargain with Jason. Doesn't work out too well for him now, does it? The crew realizes, in order to get off the ship, they have to get to the escape pod. Dude, she's a fucking robot. Rowan tells the others to get to the shuttle while she checks on the survivors. Crutch and Waylander find the pilot in pieces in the cockpit. Meanwhile, Rowan finds Brodsky alive. She tells him she's gonna be right back and leaves him again. Waylander leaves Crutch in the cockpit to help Rowan cut back to Crutch. Seeing a severed head of the professor, he gives the same response that I did watching this movie. As the crew reaches the pod, Kinsa will not open the door to the pod. As Jason reaches the crew, Kinsa tries to take the pod with the fuel line still connected. Dumb bitch. As Jason corners the three, Sooneron and KM come to fight Jason on some Resident Evil style shit. KM ends it with a round to the head, making Jason's head a crescent moon. Jason's fucking done, son. How is this bot kissing and filling? That's what I want to know. Anyhow, as they allow the nanobots to fix Brodsky, TM Met reaches out to the Grendel for a rescue. The crew comes up with a plan to get off the ship. Oh, hey, Brodsky. They leave Jason and the nanobots to scan Jason's now dead corpse. You know what that means. Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Uber Jason. The sight of this monstrosity is ridiculous. I can't believe this shit. The crew escapes while Waylander stays behind and sacrifices himself for the greater good. Sooneron and Rowan chill with KM's head in his arms. Tiamat is here to pick them up and shit is all sweet until Jason punches a hole through the ship, causing a vacuum which sucks Janessa out. But before it sucks her out, she gives one last fucking pun. Oh, this sucks on so many levels! Ah! Rowan, Sunaran, and KM, and Brodsky run for their lives as Jason breaks back into the ship. What happened to the vacuum? Tiamat is right outside, but the door won't open. Brodsky goes for a spacewalk to fix the problem. Jason comes in, looking stupid as hell. Sooneron and Rowan set up a diversion for Jason to buy Brodsky some time to open the door. Jason finally catches up to Sooneron and Rowan. 
KM initiates the simulation which leads to the dumbest recreation of an iconic kill in this franchise. After seeing Sunaran through the simulator, Jason heads for him. Him, Rowan, and KM make it to the rescue vessel, while Brodsky locks Jason in the ship with him. It's fucking on, bro! The two survivors look out the window as the Grendel explodes. In the distance, Rowan sees something coming right for him. My God, it's coming right for us! <laughs> All of a sudden, out of nowhere, flies Brodsky, intercepting Jason and riding him into the atmosphere of Earth 2, where some curious teens are going to casually check out what just fell in the lake. And that's the end of the movie. Holy fuck, guys, that was something. A lot of people think that this is a good movie, but it's not. By no means do the word good and movie fit anywhere next to this one. The concept is terrible, the execution is even worse, the comedic timing of each pun or comic relief is so off. Watching this movie with a friend was like the guys from the barbershop going to see Sexual Chocolate perform and coming to America. Randy Watson. <laughs> the creators of this movie said it was going to be a movie that brings Jason to the forefront of the horror genre while they continue to iron out and eventually make Freddy vs. Jason. Okay. You can wet my whistle without leaving a bad taste in my mouth, and that's what the movie did for me. From the first scene, I was like, what the fuck? Where the hell did they come up with this Crystal Lake research facility? That's a reach. They could barely keep counselors there without getting killed. You think Jason is gonna just abide by the contractors? Nope. He would have killed every builder there, so I don't believe that one bit. On top of that, it's a cryogenics facility, equipped with cryostasis. Who the fuck is running this operation, Nick Fury? The writing in this installment is so cheesy. Far from the typical Friday the 13th movie, but maybe that's its charm. Look what other Friday the 13th movies who dared to be different received. I feel the writer wrote himself and the franchise into a corner and didn't know how to get out of it. Jason is stuck on this ship, which is about to explode. This isn't Jason Goes to Hell. We're not gonna see some demonic creature flying in space looking for Voorhees' vagina to invade. He's going to explode into million pieces and so will any hopes of this franchise. I got it. He will fall into the atmosphere of Earth 2 and we can essentially start over again. Get the fuck out of here. Guys, I don't want to see that fucking Uber outfit if it's the last thing I do. I don't want to see a cyber Jason walking in the woods of Earth 2. Fuck that. His mask is broke off, so he would have to be uber baghead Jason on Earth 2. Nope. You can keep that shit. The kills were okay. Nothing I wouldn't expect from a Kane Hodder Jason. I did like the liquid nitrogen kill, but um, how in the fuck did Jason know that that was going to happen to her head once the liquid nitrogen hit it? He must have been paying close attention to the science part of that camp that year. Why was Sunaran fucking a robot? Why did the professor look like William Shatner? Oh, beam me up to Scotty Halloween mass face having ass. Jason X is a complete waste of time for me. I can understand why people like it because it takes Jason out of the box of Camp Crystal Lake, but I just can't stand it. The first time I saw it, I got it for a birthday present. It was so terrible, I purposely lost the VHS of it. The next year, the same fucking thing happens. I get a DVD of the fucking movie. This movie was 92 minutes of eye-rolling puns, unbelievable scenarios, typical dialogue, and Kane Hodder trying to muster something out of this train wreck of a story. I give Jason X a big fat D. <laughs> no pun intended. Other than the liquid nitrogen kill, there is nothing positively memorable about this movie. Yes, I remember Uber Jason, but for all the wrong reasons. The cast was meh. I did like Rowan and KM though. My advice is don't ever return to this continuity. This timeline is dead. Move on because if I see a trailer with Uber fucking Jason at Camp Crystal Lake on Earth 2, I'ma pull a Roy Burns. Anyway, 
If you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that bell so you don't miss anything Splatter Talk. We are now getting into the groove of putting up more content. We are putting things are going to be looking up for the 2020 and so on. So please tell a friend about us. Make sure you're taking care of yourself and your family during this crisis. And continue to plug into YouTube and Splatter Talk Cinema Review so we can keep you entertained. With that being said, this is your boy Jay, Splatter Talk Cinema Review. It's a wrap on this funky ass movie. <laughs>